How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with round two of these double sunsets from Other Half. Yeah, if you watched my previous review of this line of beers, um, you know I kind of just, eh, eh, meh, meh, about them. Um, those are bourbon barrel aged coffee variant um, vanilla milk sugar beers, as these are. Um, this one over here is Double Sunset. It is a non barrel aged version. It's an imperial stout with Mudhouse Roasters, Ethiopian uh, Tashon Gamuch coffee, vanilla, and milk sugar coming in at 13%. I believe the other ones are 13, right? Or 13.3, maybe. Um, and this one is imperial stout with uh, Ceremony Coffee Roasters, Mexican Silt Peck. Yeah, Silt Peck coffee, vanilla, and milk sugar. Um, I'm really curious to see where these land. Um, because the other ones were not necessarily negative beers, but they just tasted like quick beers. And by quick beers, if you haven't watched the review, it just tasted like they just rushed the beer from, from the making of the beer to how long it was barreled to the amount of time it spent on the coffee. It just tasted quick. Um, you know, there wasn't much barrel character to the, to the beer. There was spirit. It wasn't overly hot, but it was mostly spirit characteristics. Um, you know, the coffee was barely there it was there it was there were obvious to be coffee beers but when you're talking about doing a a set of beers you know they did four of these these two any of those others two and they're pretty much hanging their hat on the coffee variants of all these that was like a third or fourth player when it came to those beers so it was kind of a disappointment um and you would think logically you'd be like well these can't be better they are non-barrel aged how could they possibly be better than those other ones you'd be surprised sometimes yeah, you'd be surprised. So, really excited to dive into these. Yeah, this comes courtesy of my boy Kyle from Brooklyn. He sent off these, a bunch of other crazy bottled beers. Where's my big ass bottle opener? I'm gonna sit here and just do the Jedi mind trick on these. So, the bottles pop them. Where's my bottle opener? I have like 13 of them. Oop, there's one. I found it. Look at that one. Yeah, this is the cool one that was sent to me from Italy, which is pretty awesome. Um, longer. This review is going to be even longer. Um, uh, one of the first beer mails I ever received from anybody um, was from a brewery called Beer di 32. They're actually an Italian brewery. Uh, all their beers come in like uh, classic shaped wine bottles. And had these weird kind of corks in them. Or these, uh, yeah, these synthetic plastic corks. And, uh, and, uh, put that to the side for a sec and um i reviewed a couple of their beers that i found on the shelf out here in new jersey and uh they're very old but i reviewed them anyway and the brewery actually reached out to me and be like hey man those beers are kind of old they should be fresh can we please send you some freshies and i was like awesome you know I was just doing a beer reviews for about a year or so so i was kind of pumped the brewery would reach out to me and say such things um so they sent me out a box of beer um six beers and they were quite nice um and I review them, and each one of the beers had this sack, like a sack. Literally, it was like twine with a little sack, and inside a sack, it had this little, like, uh, eye hook thing. And I didn't know what it was for, because everything's in Italian. Nothing was in English. It came straight from Italy. And um, and I don't. I thought it was a bottle opener. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, wait, is this them saying, okay, you can remove the cork if you don't have a bottle opener? That was my kind of thought process around it. Um, because the corks were kind of weird. They were kind of like synthetic, but they had branding on them and stuff. They're actually kind of cool. And I said, ah, it is what it is. Ha ha ha. Funny, funny, funny. Anyway, um, the, the gentleman who actually, uh, um, sent the beers off and says, oh, I didn't tell you. Those are actually, um, for turning those corks into keychains. So you'd put that little eye hook in there and then that would become like a keychain that you could put in your thing, you know? And I thought that was pretty interesting. And he said, so you don't have a bottle opener, I'll send you one. So he sent me one. He sent it, and it was like st like crunchy and rusty and stuff. So it was obviously the one that he used um, in his house or whatever. So I thought that was pretty cool. So this is like my favorite bottle opener. Anyway, back to the beers. Um, yeah, I'll put them back up there because you guys already saw them poured. Um, I mean, it looks like Imperial Stout. Big old Imperial Stout. They got that big kind of motor oil kind of head that dissipated relatively quickly. This one has, you probably can see it on camera. This head is completely gone. Like it's like, it doesn't even want to be there. It looks more like flat soda. Even though this one doesn't have much of a head, you can still see that subtle little ring of a head on there. So I'm kind of curious to see how both of these play. Um, 
but they're identical. And what I'm guessing is they're brewing an identical beer and just varying in coffee on it. So let's go on this one over here. First, this is going to be your Mudhouse Coffee Roasters Ethiopian Tashom Gemach, Gemachu, Gemachu Coffee um, with the vanilla milk sugar. Let's see how this bleeds. See, this is more coffee forward. It doesn't come off nearly as sweet. I still expect it to be a big, sweet Imperial Stout. But the coffee is way more apparent, way more vibrant on this side of things. Is it a 13% vanilla lactose coffee bomb? No. Um, if I, I would hope if I were to do these blind, I'd smell this and be like, oh, this is probably like an 8 to 10% stout with coffee that's the kind of vibe i'm getting off it but the big difference between this and those other ones the coffee is the leader in the clubhouse here again not overly aggressive but it is the leader so yeah nice soft roastiness in the coffee there's almost like um like a milk and two sugars kind of thing going on with this thing because of that lactose and vanilla but it's quite nice and smells like a little bit of a roasty toasty kind of coffee nothing too light not that you'd put a bit light coffee in something like this let's get on this one over here which would be your ceremony coffee roasters mexican siltepec coffee the coffee's a little bit more subtle over here it's, this is definitely the kind of umphier more aggressive coffee you know it's not overly aggressive in the grand scheme of things it's one of the more aggressive um coffees at least sitting next to each other. Um, it's like a little bit more kind of subtle over here, a bit more lighter roast. This one's a little bit more darker roast. But overall, light coffee, dark coffee, light aroma, medium roast coffee, light aroma, and then subtle kind of chocolate and vanilla and lactose kind of vibes going back and forth. So let's dive in this one. Cheers. I mean, it really does mimic the other beer quite well. I shouldn't say quite well, quite accurately. Um, you lose that little bit of red fruitiness that you got from the spirit, from the bird barrel aging. But it really, it's the vanilla and the lactose leading the way over here. A little bit of roastiness from the malt, probably a little bit of roastiness from the coffee, and that coffee falling through done and done. It's barely a coffee beer for me. Barely a coffee beer. Yeah, sweet. I mean, I knew it was going to be sweet. It didn't come off sweet in the nose, but I knew it was going to be definitely followed up with that sweetness. Yeah, I mean, again, just tastes like a quick beer. That's what they come off as. Try this one. It's the same. Even it's not though. The coffee's more aggressive over here. The coffee's way lighter over here. But I, I keep stressing that by more aggressive, it's like, you know, two pennies is way more aggressive amount of money than one penny. You know, I'm not saying like this is a hundred million dollars and this is, you know, nine hundred thousand dollars. That's the kind of that's the one thing I want to stress here. The coffee for the type of beer and for how aggressive coffee can be even lighter beers you're talking about five six seven percent beers coffee can come off i don't want it to be like you know you can't even taste a beer here that's not what i'm going for but at least when you're you're focusing so intently on a coffee being marketed or a beer being marketed as hanging its hat on the coffee portion of the beers it's almost criminal about how little expressiveness the coffee gives off in these beers if I'm missing something, if this is like a joke, and honestly, it's that little of coffee. Like the first two, I was like, okay, maybe they just, I don't know, the barrel, something kind of fucked up. But these are literally the same exact kind of beers in that they show a variance in coffee that is so subtle. It's, again, the difference between a couple pennies and a couple more pennies, not hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars versus billions of dollars. It's not like that. It's, it's so light and it's so soft and it really just comes off as like, I don't know. If you had like if <laughs> if you ate like uh, um if you ate coffee ice cream, basically if you ate coffee ice cream, and you were done eating it, but you still had like remnants 
of some chocolate syrup and a vanilla ice cream and that little bit of coffee flavoring left over and it melted into a pool and you drank it. I, I don't even want to do, say that because that would show more coffee than this. It's almost like you put in four scoops of uh, vanilla in one scoop of coffee ice cream and you ate them. You know, I, I don't know how you eat ice cream, but they kind of skip around when I have different flavors and stuff like that. But then if you just have little bits of each one of those left behind and you let them all meld together, that's what it would be like. Because it would be a diluted version of that coffee ice cream with that subtle little chocolate syrup kind of floating around in there to add this little kind of pop to it. Because it's obviously chocolate malt in here. There's a little bit of chocolatey vibes. The vanilla and lactose lead the day, but it's really, it's criminal to call these beers coffee beers. It is. It is. I've had beers, let's put it this way. Dan Suarez makes a mild beer, an English mild that has no coffee in it whatsoever, and it like punches you in the fucking face with a delicious amount of coffee. No, you're talking about a five percent mild. It's way more. It's way more easy to throw an expressive note out at a, a lower ABV beer. I don't fucking care. When you're purposely putting coffee and stuff, there's really no excuse for it. Yeah. I'm sorry, Kyle. I mean, I, I wish these were great beers, and I was like, this beer's awesome. This is fantastic. I love coffee. Let's get more coffee, because this is such the best coffee in the world. They're, they taste like super quickly, super quickly brewed stouts that they tossed vanilla and lactose in, and literally just randled it over coffee beans. Not even, like, rested it on coffee, or I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of poopy, man. It's kind of poopy because I know these weren't cheap. I think these were like 13 to 16 bucks a bottle. I think the other ones were close to 20. So he sent me two of each or two, four bottles total. You do the fucking math. It's a lot of fucking money, man. And I didn't even spend it, but I'm fucking pissed. Yeah, this is not good. I mean, the coffee's there, but man. And I'm coming off COVID, so I'm I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that, like, my my taste and my smell, uh, my smell, my taste is fine. It's one hundy, but I've had coffee beers over the past week. I haven't drank coffee. I know what coffee tastes like, and I taste the wazoo out of that shit, so I'm not going to blame it on that. Eh, it's kind of lost me here, so let's wrap it up. Um, yeah, a uh, little bit of additional coffee on this one. Lactose, vanilla driven, a little bit of roasted malt, same thing over here, but a little less coffee. Are these some of the better coffee beers I've ever had? Or even in the past couple months? No. Um, just honestly, like I said, kind of the more I drink them, the more I get a little bit kind of upset and, and kind of frustrated. Um, let's see, value and availability. Other half, go there, you can get them and leave you with if you like what we like these beers. If you like pastry stouts and you want the ever so slightest dab, dab of coffee, yeah, then you'll like these. So there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive. Want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of coffee beers right now. Hope we'll see you next time. Cheers.